my name is Jim Furman, and uh, I am thrilled to be here today for really three reasons. Uh, I've had a hearing loss all of my life. I've experienced the consequences of a mild loss, a moderate loss, a severe loss over my lifespan. Uh, I understand at a personal level the benefits and limitations of treatment, not only hearing aids, but speech reading education. 30 years ago, when I had a full head of hair, I was at the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and worked with Barbara Weinstein and tried to convince my colleagues that aging, age-related hearing loss was a serious problem and something should be done about it. I did not succeed. We did not succeed. But I have a feeling that we're at a different moment in history, and this conference, these two days, might mark a, a historic turning point on this issue. And third, as the CEO of the National Council on, or on Aging, or an organization whose mission is to improve the lives of millions of older adults, I'm alarmed by the prevalence and the consequences of untreated hearing loss. So what I'd like to do in the time allotted to me is address what I see as some of the key issues affecting uh, related to age-related hearing loss in this country. First of all, as we've heard, it's a prevalent condition where two out of every 100 children has hearing loss and one out of 14 people under the age of 65 have hearing loss. 40% of people between the age of 65 and 84 have hearing losses and two out of three people over the age of 85 have hearing loss. So clearly we're talking about something that's prevalent, but prevalence alone isn't enough to make a compelling case. Diabetes is prevalent and clearly that we have a crisis there, but sinusitis is prevalent too and we don't worry too much about that. So prevalence matters, but it isn't sufficient. The most Another really critical and unusual characteristic of hearing loss is that it's invisible. You can't tell who has a hearing loss by looking at them. You can't tell the severity of the loss, and you have really no idea what it means to them. So look around this room. Raise your hand if you have normal hearing. Okay, put them down. Thank you. Raise your hand if you have some level of hearing loss. Okay, keep your hand up if you, if you have a mild, a mild to moderate loss, if you have a moderate to severe loss, if you have a severe to profound loss. So we would not have known that about these people in this room. We just know there's a group of people. We know some of them have hearing losses. We don't know how much hearing loss they have, uh, and we don't know what it means. But here's the real issue, a critical issue in understanding this issue, is hearing loss is not only invisible to you, hearing loss is invisible to those of us who have hearing loss. We are aware that we are missing things, but we have no clear idea about how much we miss or what we've missed. And we have to understand this if we're going to solve the fact of, of bridging the gap that's before us. And now with the help of my colleague, I want to hopefully demonstrate for you what I'm talking about. We're going to uh, play seven sound bands. I'm going to tell you to stop. You're starting at the beginning. But the first one is just a, a level set to see what normal hearing is, OK? And then you'll stop after this one. Please okay? adjust the volume so that this is my... the level of normal speech. One two, three, four. Stop. That was my son, my, my college son, who helped me put this together. So now one of the most common questions that I get is I'll be at a concert and my mother, and my mother, my used to be my mother, now my wife, other people will say, do you hear the music? And Honestly, I don't know what that means. So we're going to pay three segments of mu music in a row. We play four. If you had a severe to profound loss, we're not even going to bother playing it because you wouldn't hear anything. But what you're going to hear in sequence is what the music sounds like to a person with first with a moderate to severe loss, 
then with a mild to moderate loss, and then with normal hearing. So play the next three, please. Mild to moderate. That, I'm sorry, that was moderate to severe. This is mild to moderate. Now normal. Stop, thank you. So now, raise your hand if you could hear the difference between those three. Raise your hand if you couldn't really hear the difference between those three. So what you've heard there is something that people who don't hear, when you say, did you hear the music? I heard the music. The people with mild to moderate heard the music. The people with normal hearing heard the music. But what effect does that have? Now, what's the effect of not hearing music? Quality of life, maybe. What's the effect of going to a, a movie and missing the dialogue? quality of life. But there's something more important. What about communication? If you can't understand what your boss is saying to you, what your coworker is saying to you, what your spouse is saying to you, what your child or your grandchild is saying to you, what's the effect of that on hearing? So now we're going to go through the same sequence for a conversation uh, in a restaurant. Severe to profound, we're not even going to demonstrate because you can't hear it. Uh, first, let's have three and uh, listen, listen to these. Moderate to severe. Mild to moderate. So I'm looking at this menu. The only thing that's jumping out at me is the surface. Surf and surf is definitely the way to go. You doing the same? Oh, yeah, I love all the steak. It's great here. Normal. So I'm looking at this menu. The only thing that's jumping out at me is surf and surf. Surf and surf is definitely the way to go. You doing the same? Oh, yeah, I love all the steak. It's great here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Becky. The key to this is that none of us can understand the problem or empathize it if we don't have a sense of the degree to which it's affecting us. And the other thing that's really important is what you've just heard is a dramatic uh, loss of function. But in fact, what happens in a gradual age-related way, you don't hear those dramatic differences. The core issue here is most people with hearing loss do not understand what they are missing, and therefore they are not motivated to take action. It took a long time, but thank you. The next thing that's really important is that it's insidious. The consequences are not obvious, and they're pervasive. We're going to hear from experts on this subject about the physical, cognitive, and psychosocial impact. But the most important one, as far as I'm concerned, is that the inability to hear well, to, an inability to communicate well, makes it much harder to continue to be an active, engaged, and contributing member of society. And as we're looking at this model of people withdrawing, not participating, not staying at work, not staying involved, not engaging, it's really hard if you have a significant hearing loss that's untreated. The next thing about this is, is a treatable condition. Even people with severe hearing loss can function at a much higher level with proper hearing aids and treatment. Now, we know they're not perfect. We know that you can't uh, restore 2020 hearing like we do 2020 vision, but it can be significantly improved. But one of the insights that I've learned is not just about good hearing aids. It also requires really good speech reading skills. When I was seven years old, I, because of PL 504, mainstreaming the handicap, I was pulled out of second grade and given speech lessons twice a week. 
It is the amplification plus the ability to read lips that may, enables me to function. When Franklin was talking, I could hear him when I could see him. I closed my eyes and I, could, I missed 50% of what he said right now. We have to recognize that if we want to correct this problem among older adults, it's not just about amplification, it's about auditory training and speech reading as well. When you do the research, as people are doing now, on the uh, comorbidity of vision problems and hearing loss, you find those people can't function in part because they can't speech read. If you don't believe me, throughout this conference, close your eyes for a couple of minutes when somebody's talking, and you'll start to see how important speech reading is as part of the problem. We also know, as we've heard, it's often untreated. Nine out of 10 people with mild loss don't have hearing aid. Six out of 10 with moderate to severe application with severe hearing loss don't have hearing aids. 70% of people between 65 and 64 don't use hearing aids, and half the people uh, of their ages are not using hearing aids. We did a study and 14 years ago on the consequences of hearing loss in older adults, and the reasons that older adults gave us for not using hearing aid blew my mind. 59% uh, of all the people who with untreated hearing loss said that I, my hearing isn't bad enough. I can get along fine without a hearing aid. I can guarantee you as a person with a moderate to severe loss that there is no way that you are doing fine and get along fine without it if that hearing loss is not treated. Consumer concerns about expense uh, were, are very significant but I don't think those are the real reasons people don't get hearing aids, although we clearly have to address that issue. The one that's most mind-blowing for me is vanity and stigma. 20% of the people say, it would make me feel old. I don't the way, like the way I would look. I'm too embarrassed to wear one. They're not too embarrassed to respond inappropriately, to pull out of situations, to be viewed as being senile, but they're too embarrassed to be seen wearing a hearing aid. Uh, this just is astounding for me. And finally, because my time is up very quickly, this is not a, a priority for policymakers. Nobody is seriously talking about expanding coverage for hearing aid. We cannot yet make a case to Medicare that it's cost effective, and we could do this. Medicaid, which has covered hearing aids, is probably maybe cutting back because of cost pressure. The VA is a beacon in all of this, and hallelujah to the, to the VA. But the fundamental issue is the policymakers and the general public are unsure whether hearing loss is a lifestyle issue, a health care cost issue, or a public health concern. This conference should help move uh, the awareness on that issue. And finally, this is a solvable public health challenge. We know what's happening. We understand the interventions. It's not like we have to create some new solutions that don't exist. What we have to do is create the awareness of the problem and, and move together with collective action to make a difference. So to, in summary, this is a prevalent condition, it's an invisible condition, insidious, treatable, often untreated, not yet a po priority for policymakers, and a solvable public health challenge. Thank you.